we've got uh, Brian Wilcox, who's the cabinet member for transport from Herefordshire Council. And we've got uh, Roy Stockton, where's he gone? <laughs> he's, he's behind me, who's our, who's our local county councillor. So we've got, um, we've got everybody who is responsible here, and they all want you to make sure that you know that they are doing their job just as they would if it was the other way around. So please, who's got the first question? Yep. May, I'd like to start, if I may, with the first question, um, which is, I'd like to ask Network Rail because we understand Herefordshire Council's response, which has been that since they understood the bridge to be unsafe, they were going to close it. But our understanding is that Network Rail has a responsibility for the bridge as well. And I'd like to ask the question of Network Rail as to what criteria they've based their decision upon, which says trains can travel underneath the bridge, but light traffic up to 24 tonnes can't. What is the criteria they've actually based that assumption on? The assumption that you're using is completely wrong. The figure of t Louder. The assumption you're using is completely wrong. It's a complete herring. The 24 tons did not relate, in fact, to the capacity for traffic to travel over the bridge. The 24 tons is a liability factor created in the dim and distant Victorian past by old BR, and it's a factor that, in fact, is confusing a lot of people locally. Now, I'm not an engineer. I have an engineer with me. Unfortunately, we don't have enough time to go through the detail of, in fact, what that 24 tonnes means and what it, what it is used for. But it is wrong if, if the local community believe that all of a sudden, in fact, you can put 24 tonnes across that bridge based on a figure that is historically there linked to network rail or BR's old reliability. It is wrong and it's a wrong way to go about it. It is not correct at all. The Chris, railway is running underneath there. If we thought for a second that there was any danger of anything falling off that bridge or that bridge collapsing catastrophically, we would shut the railway. No question about it. And trains would not so be running uh, now. What I'm asking is, what is the criteria by which uh, all of a sudden nobody, then pedestrians, then perhaps ordinary traffic, I think what everyone f can't understand is that to the immense distress of businesses, schools and in awful problems with traffic, cars, people everywhere else. They're decisions that don't seem to be based on criteria that we've been given the evidence of. We don't understand why certain things are allowed and certain things aren't. The original assessment, and jump in if anyone wants to help me out. Um, the original assessment, the original, the original assessment showed concerns about the structure of the bridge. As a result, Herefordshire Council took a decision based on the, the proposals or the comments given to them to actually uh, shut the bridge full stop. Herefordshire Council then came to Network Rail, as you would expect, soon after that decision was, was, was taken. We then looked at the, the, the information with them, and with Network Rail determined that based on the information we had at that time, we believed it would be safe to reopen the bridge for pedestrian traffic. And that was the way we looked at it, without going into all the technical ways that, that the engineers were looked at. That was the determination. I, I, can, I can confirm that that was correct. Some time ago, I don't know how long, two years, three years, you, you put traffic lights here. At that time you must have realised that there was something wrong with the bridge or you wouldn't have done it. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Why wasn't something done then? There's been further, further deterioration since then. They got it. Don't worry. Since that time there's been further deterioration of the, uh, of the bridge. But it obviously. must have been deteriorating then to start with. In the meantime, <laughs> no. No. Yeah. Why did it take two years? Okay, hold on, hold on. Let him have a chance. Yeah, 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 you yes, must. Yes, yes, yes. The reason for for putting traffic signals on the bridge and reducing the traffic to single lane approximately two years ago was because of the condition of the bridge at that time. You are correct, we were aware of the condition of the bridge. The recent assessment back in August, um, the amount of deterioration at that point was was a was significantly more than we had expected. Why has it taken a further two months from that to have a full-scale investigation only a few days ago, ten days ago? It takes time to arrange possessions of the track so that you can actually oh, look underneath the bridge. That's from rail track, is This it? lady was yes. network rail. Well, presumably, network from network rail. rail. Presumably, you could have done that at a, a blink. No, I'm afraid not. Why not? We have to negotiate and arrange those with the 
with the train operating companies. When's it going to be opened? The, the result of the assessment process will, will be known at the end of December. What year? What year? And that will allow us to make a decision on, on, the, on, what, on what we do with the bridge. Why will it take this so long? This gentleman, Sorry. and then you. Yeah, you, you explained earlier on that the assessment was going to take from about the 13th of October to the end of December because one man was going to do the calculations. Not more than one person could do it because that would cause confusion. It had to be done carefully. Most of the people standing on this bridge will find that totally and utterly ludicrous. Yeah, yeah. And I have to say, as a retired professor of computer science from an engineering faculty, I think it's a load of bollocks. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I can assure you, I, I, have done, I, I have done assessments myself in the past. I, I can assure you, I've done assessments of bridges in the past and it can only be done by one person. It is then checked by another and it's checked exceedingly rigorously by the, by the um, checker. An ex-chief engineer from Worcester in an engineering company, I find the whole thing a bit ridiculous because it is only a single track, not a double track. It was built for a double track, the railway line. Not correct? Yes. Yeah. Why can't you buttress either side and you've got a, short, a smaller span, you can use the existing bridge, you could brick up um, on either side or stanchion it and have a shorter span and the, be perfectly all right for British Rail and super for the cars. It would strengthen it up to measures. You would span is the most important thing about it. If you've got a longer span, you're in trouble. With a short span, it's a cinch. You could use the existing bridge. Those long span beams aren't the ones with the failing. One of the members of the bridge that caused the consultants the concern when they recommended closing it Aren't the outside girders which go from side to side? They're the, the smaller ones which span between the abutments and the outside members. So, your colleague, your. Uh, you could add to that to the new piers you put in, or bolts. Or you could add to that a well, strengthening member to do cover that's, that. That's what the feasibility studies should should have. Oh God, it doesn't take out. long to do that. Okay.